guys have done it again introducing Coley AI it's just as simple as you type in in something and the creation comes to life right before your eyes and look it's available to you right now click the link at the top line of the description box right now this is the most amazing app ever though Sam man um you were talking about we all see if you're on you know Instagram you know X any of these you know sites and you follow hip hop in particular female hip hop you've seen a lot of twerking going on lately <laughs> Lotto Flo Millie Megan Thee Stallion and even Glorilla well Sam man has a interesting comment that somebody left him that you know he's going to read to me and we're going to share it with you guys and um get it in Word, word. This this comment got me in particular because, well, first off, shout out to the, the people that checked out our video um, talking about JD's conversation with the industry and things like that. This comment came from that video. And a brother from Tennessee, shout out to uh, Mac Tez Armory, right, out of Tennessee. He said, man, look, I was getting in the shower looking for music to listen to. I don't know how y'all shit popped up, but I'm glad it did. I'm from North Memphis, a block over from Gorilla, and man, she was our female project, Pat. Wow. So we thought they're turning her out. You know you're a good female artist when males and females can listen to you, but now all this shit is just a virtual strip club. Now, that, that comment got me because you in particular have been talking about Gorilla in particular the last couple of months or so during this whole transition, and you seemed at talking on it bothered by the transition because mm -hmm. it's a talented young lady. Yeah. And, and the transition that was occurring kind of seemed like they were over-sexualizing her now, but and, and knowing what you thought about the situation and then confirming it from somebody down there into the situation, I wanted to get your thoughts on what we heard from that brother. Shout out to that brother again for that comment. Yeah, nah, I mean, it's just the eye test. Even her going out and getting the implants and everything, she is feeling the pressure from the industry and maybe people that surround her that you have to, like, it's a blueprint, I think. It's a blueprint that's been around for a long time, I think, of a female artist. And the artists that don't necessarily fit that blueprint kind of fade off. The blueprint is, you know, a certain, you know, body type, a certain look, you know, long nails, very flamboyant, very trashy with your mouth, talking about sex all the time. And you got to be willing to turn around, put a thong on, and shake your behind, you know, because in a way it's what people want to see. But now I'm starting to see the whole agenda. It is nothing new. I mean, I can, we can go all the way back to Little Kim. And even before, like slightly before little Kim Foxy Brown, I think that's when it really was ushered in. And that was the point where I think somebody's seen, like, all right, this is the archetype right here. This is the prototype. When Kim leaves, if somebody else wants to come in, because even Nicki Minaj, she came out a certain way. She could spit her ass off. She's got the implants. She began now to turn into this prototype of what they want. And then the Cardi B's and et cetera, and Meg Thee Stein's, and it goes on and on. So if you come out with somebody who I think Glorilla is very talented. I don't think she's the best lyricist or nothing like that. I'm not, but she's talented. She puts together good songs, makes great music. I don't think she had to do that. I don't. I think it was good for her to stay in the vein that she was in. But, see, the industry, in my opinion, wasn't going to allow that. They wanted to move her down the path of everybody else because... Maybe to some type of agenda, but it's like in business when things work, people keep using it. If the Big Mac's been successful for fifty years, why would I stop making a Big Mac? If the Whopper has been successful for seventy years, why would I stop making a Whopper? Word. And on and on. So you see, Little Kim was successful. Cardi B is successful. Nicki Minaj was successful. All these people were successful with this, you know, uh, um, caricature of someone. Why would you stop it? Glorilla's just the next in the line. And if we can go all the way down the line, you know, Flo Millie, Glorilla, you know, a Megan Thee Stallion, Lotto, all of these chicks. But then you go to the Rhapsodies, you know, and, some, and the other chicks, you know, in the game. They're not as popular. Not, they don't get pushed a lot. You don't see them, you know, on the mainstream. You don't hear them on the radio a lot because they're not willing to, you know, follow this archetype. Also, I want to say, mm -hmm. even now you see what they're trying to do with Scarlet. Watch, watch Scarlet. They're trying to do the same thing with Scarlet as well. I saw her kind of like doing. I'm like, nah. But yeah, that, that's. I mean, that's so you you brought up some good good points, and as I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, right? Because I know in our conversation, and we might have even said it. And let me backtrack if we if I know if I personally did, 
as far as talent is concerned. Because you talk about a Meg Thee Stallion, you talk about a Lotto, you talk about a Glorilla. Um, let me think of any somebody else. I'm thinking, uh, Nicki Minaj, of course. These women were talented. They started off spitting. You think you look at Lotto's videos when she was younger, she can rap. You look at Go Gorilla, Gloria, Hallelujah, talented. Meg Thee Stallion had bars walking into the situation. You're like, okay, freestyles, albeit little things like that, but she could, she had talent. And then somewhere along the way, they felt like shaking their ass and putting stripper elements into their music was the way to go. And I feel like that ushered in this new generation and wave of female rap, like the Sexy Reds and the Ice Spices, where there's no mother effing talent at all. And it's just straight strip rap. And it's like, I would love to really sit down and maybe talk to somebody that watched some of these female artists as they developed and where that transition occurred and why that transition occurred. Was it pressure from the labels? Was it pressure from the, from the people? Was it pressure from them to make them feel like they had to do this when they were talented? Was it pressure looking at a Rhapsody or looking at some of the lyricists, the uh, um, Tierra Wax and things like that, yeah, yeah. and looking at the, the, the artistry and them not getting recognized the way they did? It's like, this is my dream. I got to do this. So let, I wonder what it was to make them switch because it's almost like, yo, it's nauseating. I love women. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not out there running around touching, but the eye, I, I, yeah, you, you enjoy the beauty of a woman. You guys have so much power, but now it's so watered down and it's so just, it's almost nauseating to watch because it's almost like, why? I want to get to the root of why. Why do you think that is, mm -hmm. man? You look at a Glorilla and it, like I said, I've heard conversations with you and it seemed like you were bothered by it because you enjoyed that young lady's talent. Right. Why do you think that, why do you think that is, bro? Like, I think it's just the pressure you know, and I'm wanting, wanting to continue to, to stay successful. And, you know, a lot of, see, a lot of these people that go to different camps, they probably been with other artists and been other places, just like any industry. You in, a, you in a, um, the film industry, people been around. They've been in different things around people. Same, same thing with the music industry. So they, they probably been in the industry and they know, like, all right, if we do this, we definitely going to win. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just what it is. And, and, you know, they begin to start winning and, and they keep doing it and they're making more money. You know, doing it. Every artist, female artist, doesn't have to be a sex symbol. Just like every male artist didn't have to be a sex symbol. I mean, you had it in your R&B early on, but it was totally on a different level. Like a dude going to come out with a shirt unbuttoned to show a six-pack. That's kind of a part of the appeal. But he ain't going to come out there in a damn male thong shaking his shit around. But not. And that, exactly. And that's what you see now with the women. It's totally like, I'm coming out here in a stripper outfit, and I'm just going to pop it. But... What about the effect that you having on the young kids, though? And that's that's always the most important part. Like, do you not really care? Or the money, I'm just about my money, F all y'all. And I think that's just the attitude. Like, I'm getting my bread, I don't care. Right? And I'm not expecting everybody to be a Malcolm X, Martin Luther King type, but you should care enough about your community not to destroy it, whether you're going into it selling drugs whether you, you know, whatever you're doing to, to destroy your community, you should care enough to say, all right, look, this is having an effect. Like, you mean to tell me you go to your concert and you start shaking it and you got 14, 15, 16 year olds, you feel comfortable doing that shit? They do. They do. But then, yeah, and then, but then oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm going to say, not to cut you off, at those concerts, there's three generations of women twerking and doing it. The grandma's doing it, the mama's doing it, the daughter's yeah, doing there it. There you go. It's crazy. And then you look at the influence that this music has because, see, a lot of people, the argument may be, all right, kids don't got to watch it. This is for grown folk. But uh, but when they can go and use a TikTok trend and go ahead and put it on there, when they can throw it on Instagram, when it's accessible to them and you're marketing it to them because you're making it trendy to put your song behind a dance or something like that, how are they not going to hear it? How are they not going to be influenced by it when this makes the world go around now? Right. It's go ahead. Where's the white where you see Kelly Clarkson doing this? Do you see any of those artists, those country artists, country singers, you know, doing this? Do you see any of those white females, those uh Middle Eastern females, Asian females doing this? No, I don't see it. Now it may be out there somewhere, I'm pretty sure, but it's not promoted and pushed on us. It's not in our algorithm. Because you only watch what's in your algorithm, what's fed to you, right? It's popping up in my shit. You know, um, Lotto and all these, because we follow certain hip hop um, blogs and stuff, that stuff is being fed to us. You don't see that nobody else doing that. 
So the damage that it's having is long lasting. It's super long lasting. And we all going to feel effects. See, this world ain't about us no more. Like our time, we maybe got 40, 50 years, you know, God willing to be on this earth. We got children that's young. They got to deal with this shit. Mm. What kind of world are we creating for them? When they get of age and the people that they got to deal with and the, you know, uh, um, different situations they're going to have to deal with in life. How many hip-hop blogs would you say are out there? Give or take, how many do you think you see? Right off the top. Hundreds. Okay. Hundreds. Would you say, is it fair to say they pretty much all post the same thing when it comes to that type of stuff? When it trends like that, they all post the same thing for the yeah. most part. Yeah. How many times are you seeing that per time you open that app? Every time you open Instagram, how many times are you seeing that image? Probably thousands. Yeah. And that is imprinting on your brain every single day. And you mean to tell me that these people out here don't look at us a certain way when it is imprinted on them too? When you got a TMZ video with Sexy Red running around and now this lady got to come out and say that wasn't even her, they don't give a fuck. Right. They don't care. And that's how it's imprinted. And now that's how we're looked at. It makes sense for a sexy red to go out there and be on some animalistic buffoonery shit in the airport because that's how she's perceived because that's how she presents herself. Go ahead, bro. Nah, and then it's like e even on another level, relationships. We wonder why so many relationships is broken in our community because it's the trickle-down effect the way these young women is being taught. And I get it. It starts in the household as well. But you want to over-sexualize women or do you want a female... That's gonna be respectful. You want your girl out in the club popping her shit all in the air? Or do you want a woman that's gonna be respectful? You know, to you now when you get in your bedroom, that's your personal thing. Obviously, you wanna get it in, do your thing. But do you want a respectable female that knows how to act? Not all, all up in a man's face, not cussing him out, wanting a baller that make five hundred thousand plus a year and all this, a thug nigga, all that. All it, the bad stereotypes we got. Right, right. And you know. It's, I think that this industry is guilty of breeding those type of females and males. And we wonder why we're killing each other. We wonder why, you know, um, the pregnancy rate so high. We wonder why the drugs and alcohol and we can't get along and we fighting and we, you know, guys is punching on girls and girls is punching on guys. Yeah, it, it, hip hop has a major part in that, but so does, you know, other things. But we're dealing with the hip hop part of it right now. So it just got to be a little bit more accountability. That's all from the people. You know, and the people really got to stand up and say, look, we sick of this shit. The, the people, instead of feeding it and them getting 100,000 views in 20 seconds on these blogs, start, you know, turning it off. Start unsubscribing from these things and they'll stop posting it. Is it going to happen? Unrealistically not. But we got to get tired as a people of this shit or the way that we are perceived and the way that we are, you know, handled by the world. Because if nobody respects you, if nobody thinks you're shit, if nobody thinks you're an animal... They ain't gonna give a shit when your ass is wiped out of here. And it ain't even just the music. I'm sitting here thinking like, they're not just influenced by the music. This is how these motherfuckers are acting. They get on these social media platforms and don't drop a damn bar, don't drop a damn song. They just <laughs> acting stupid. <laughs> yeah. And people follow that shit. Yeah. Or they on a TikTok trend doing something wild and people follow that shit because they follow the personality. Personality is running hip hop and now we done mixed the two. This ain't hip hop. You ain't spit a bar. How is this hip hop? But it's acknowledged as hip hop. Yeah. Yep. And we are imprinted to think so. Yep. And I know a lot of, see, a lot, difference between us and a lot of people, a lot of people think this way. A lot. But it's like, what's going to make you money? People are compromised with that. Am I going to get it shunned? Like, what the hell is Drake doing promoting a damn sexy red? Like, you clinging on to the next hot thing, and you don't even got to do that. No. You know? No. But that's a whole other topic, man. Whole another day. We don't want to see that. We don't want to see that girl not be successful and not win. Just pr pr promote the right. Don't don't do the shit. That, never mind. Whatever. She gonna be honestly, man. No, not to say anything negative, but she gonna come and she gonna go. Like it's all gonna the be somebody else. Yep. Right. She right. hot now, or whatever. But she gonna come and she gonna go. But I'm not even like it, her acting one way. But listening to her lyrics is totally made me wants to throw up, man. Oh God, I can't even do it. You got I don't need than no me. girl. Let him pop this. See. Like, he better paint my nails. Like, what? That's the type of shit she's saying. Mm. And they, the kids love it. Oh, love it. They love it. Can't Eight, nine, enough. 10, 11, 12 year old. They love it. They singing it. Man, we, if we understand the power of music, man, if we understand the power of words, 
we will all be cringing right now. Mm-hmm. We will all, and then when you talk about C. Dolores Tucker, saying, no, we got to tear this shit up. We got to run over these albums. No, 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 we can't have this. It was nowhere near that level now that it is now. She probably turned over her grave to see the shit. Man, now. man, because she understood, she knew the power of words, the power especially of music. She understood that. I wish there could have been some type of middle ground that more conversation had. We don't know to the depths. It seemed more like a fight in, in a tug of war as opposed to a meeting of the minds and coming Absolutely. to some type of conclusion. Because that conversation right there, although we thought was historic for hip hop, how historic was it and to what effect? Because we looked at that woman as this old, crazy, uh, conservative black woman that wasn't allowing these young brothers and, and young sisters express to watch them themselves. express themselves. But to what end? How 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 the the level of knowledge that she had on this earth where was her mindset? And I wish we could have came to some type of middle ground, man, because right. that conversation could have really set the trajectory of where we're at to a different spot. We we won't know now. It's all of speculation. You know what I mean? But damn. And and it's even like like to kind of even like I understand why some of these rappers wanted to fight to express themselves because you Word. had some rappers that had the ratchet music, but they also Use that music as a revolutionary tool. Facts, Tupac, Bob Marley, Jay Z, even at times, DMX. Certain artists at certain times, Nas, yep. used that music as like a platform, a soapbox, to actually speak in. They know they couldn't. If they were to go on the street and say what they said, they would probably be persecuted. Mm-hmm. But if they say it in a song and put it cleverly, you know what I mean. Nobody says nothing about it, but it still could have the same effect on the people. Yeah. You know what I mean, and I and, and that's another part of it. So I and I understand that. That's why it's like that middle ground. Like, damn, like I understand it, but when you got the sexy reds and the people like that now, it's like, look what this shit evolved to. Yeah, yeah. You got people. Hip hop used to be speaking, and used to almost the arts used to speak in code to the people who understood it, and it would affect them. You know what I'm saying? Most motherfuckers wouldn't even understand what they were talking about or what they were hearing. They were just intrigued by the beat, intrigued by the charisma, but they didn't know what they were listening to. People didn't break down the bars now. They lay this ration right out for you. They'll tell you their crimes. They'll tell you what to do. It's just nonsense, man. Good yeah. conversation, bro. Yeah, definitely, 